Praise the Lord. God's good, isn't it? Amen. That should be our desire. Let my life be a light. Let me help someone else. You know, uh, as a lesson this morning, as I said, awesome lessons this morning at the end. Talk about the rich man, you know, Peter. We had that thought, let my life be a light. He had never ended up in the place he ended up. He had never had the problems he ended up having. He had never had a, uh, the situation he ended up having. Had he desired to let his life be a light. Because had he desired to let his life be a light, he would have helped the beggars. He would have, he would have been a witness and been a testimony and helped his brothers. But yet he didn't choose to let his life be a light. You know, that's what we've got to choose. There's a lot of people uh, uh, across uh, across the that that you know one minute they're wanting their life to be a light, next minute they're wanting uh, they're wanting to just give up and give in. Let me tell you, now's not the time to give in, church. Now's not the time to give up. Now's not the time to just go into town. Now's the time to march and man up. Hallelujah! Be ready for the coming of the Lord. It'll be awesome uh, for what God has in store for you. We're going to go to prayer at this time. Let's remember our lost loved ones that we say before it's too late. Also, our children. God will bless them, minister in their homes and in their hearts. Also, uh, let's remember our school system. God will touch them, bless everyone involved in the school system. Minister in my way, as I said, as soon as we'll say again, let's remember our election coming up, that people will pray before they cast that vote, and God will just move and minister upon their heart, that, uh, that God's will uh, will be done. And God's will will be done, whether we will it or not, whether we want it or not, God's going to have the final say. His will is going to be accomplished and going to be done. Let's pray uh, for our election. Let's pray for our uh, our country and our government. Let's pray for our local uh, uh, frontline workers, the U.S. law enforcement, fire department, and all the ones uh, on the front line. Let's keep them in prayer. Uh, God will move and minister and touch in their needs. Uh, also, let's keep Gail in prayer this morning. Uh, not feeling well. <clears throat> keep Sister Nancy in prayer and uh, Alva. Lord, will touch them also. Let's keep Marsha and the kids and Dorothy in prayer. God will touch them. Also, Ms. Brenda, keep her in prayer. Ms. Mary, keep her in prayer. Uh, let's keep, uh, uh, let's keep um, uh, Brother Sister Tucker's daughter Danielle in prayer. God will touch. God will bless. Also, Sister Tucker's aunt, uh, Linda, and uh, her friend, Leslie. Leslie, I tried to remember. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Remember Leslie this morning. God will touch. God will minister uh, in a mighty way. Uh, also, let's keep uh, Sister Angel's mom and dad in prayer. God will touch them and bless them. Uh, it's good to see Brother, uh, uh, Brother Tim with us. God's blessing. God's touching. He's going to be back up and at them quickly. Uh, so uh, keep him in prayer. Uh, also, it's good to see uh, uh, Aunt and Uncle Julia and Jimmy with us today. Praise the Lord. God's good. And also, Cousin Kim. God's blessed them and touched them. Help them to be able to be back. So God's on the throne. He's still working it out. He's still blessing. You know, and just pray. Pray that God will just take away this COVID stuff. You know, it's uh, it's gone from making me hungry to making me. Just, just plain out mad. Right? Amen. This COVID nineteen stuff is uh, is getting on my nerves, Amen. and I, 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 I'm just sick and tired of COVID nineteen. So, uh, so help me pray that God will just disperse that and it'll go go somewhere else besides around you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I wonder if you have a request this morning to give anybody. Any prayer requests this morning?
in your prayer request. Yes. Thank you. 
get you anointed, Lord. Do the work today, God. It's in your hands. We'll give it to you right now. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And the church said, Amen. 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 God is so good. God is so good today. God is blessing. God is ministering. God is moving in the mighty way. I believe in God to just reach down and touch every, every situation that comes up, every situation, every circumstance. We serve an awesome Savior. The world don't know what they're missing when they don't serve the Lord. They don't know what they're missing when they don't serve the, an awesome God. They just don't understand. This world doesn't know what's going on. But let me tell you this morning, if you're saved to the uttermost, you know what's going on this morning. You know what's happening. You know what's taking place. You know what's going to happen uh, throughout eternity. We're going to go to a, a place that's green, a place that's good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This time, uh, this time, worship the Lord with us. As we sing uh, 333, I'll fly away. One day we're going to fly away, church. Hallelujah. You stand and sing, you sit and sing. Ever how you want to sing, as long as you sing. Hallelujah.
I'm looking for Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to stand in that This time we get Brother Eddie to come and share a morning. I just want to thank the Lord this morning, and I'm going to take you right now. If the internet, if you're good on the TV, sit up right there. You can sit right there. Yeah. I'm just going to go ahead and share. If we mess up, I don't care, because yeah. it's a praise for me this morning to have my husband stand up here and be able to set him aside yeah. and stand. Yeah. And I'm
And church people have believed the devil to go. The church people have allowed the devil to have everything God has already blessed them with. I came this morning to help you this morning. Uh, there may be some people that get upset with me. There may be some people that get mad at me. But the, there's an old saying that says, you get mad and lay in the same britches or change your water. That's all I can tell you this morning. God gave me uh, this message. God breathed this into my life. This message uh, is for today. It's for this morning. So uh, you just have to take it up with the Lord if you don't like it. Uh, take it up with Him because God is my refuge. God is my refuge. Hey, the Bible is Genesis 16. Genesis chapter 16 this morning. Then forgive me if I keep tugging on this wire. It's aggravating me getting stuck in my collar and everything on this microphone. I don't know how long I'm gonna like this thing. I might have to just throw it down and leave it alone. But I, I like to the concept there. If it'll, if it'll, if it'll bear with me and work with me today. God will help this wire to just be good. And I'll be good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 16. Familiar passage. Maybe brought about in a different manner this morning. For each and every one here. Genesis chapter 16. Now Sarah, Abel's wife, bare him no children. And she had an handmaid, an Egyptian, <clears throat> whose name was Hagar. And Sarah said unto Abel, Behold, now the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarah. And Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband Abram to be his wife. He went unto Hagar, and she conceived, and when she saw that she conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. And Sarah said to Abram, My wrong be upon thee, I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between me and thee. And Abram said unto Sarah, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarah dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. And the angel of the Lord found her by the fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the wet shirt. And he said, Hagar, Sarah's maid, whence canest thou? And whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress Sarah. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress and submit thyself unto her hand. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with a child, and shall bear a son, and shall cause him Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. And he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Heavenly Father, I come before you this morning, loving you, praising you. Thank you one more time for allowing us to be in the house. God, I ask you to to mention, mention one more time, God, for our heaven upon each and every one. Lord, and Lord, I urge you to hear our mouths to speak, our hearts to receive. God, you have something for every one this morning. And Lord, I thank you for it. I ask you to reach down and bless everyone doubly this morning in a mighty way. Lord, we love you, praise you, thank you, in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Why settle for an Ishmael? Why settle for an Ishmael? When God has an Isaac. That's right. Amen. Why settle for an Ishmael when God has an Isaac? We live in a time where people are settling. People even in the church world are settling for this and settling for that. They're settling for morals to be lessened and uh, doctrines to be watered down and teachings to be sugar-coated. And we settle in this world, in the church world that we live in, even in Pentecostal churches, and we've settled and said, well, that's all right. We'll just, we'll just let that go. We'll let that slide. We'll, we'll let that take place. We'll, it'll be all right. And we've settled in this church world. And we've allowed things to go on that shouldn't go on. We've allowed things to happen that shouldn't happen. And we've settled on things because people have just quit believing God. They just quit believing God. They quit trusting in God. They just forget all about what God said. There's, there, there's so much in this passage to learn. And I want to bring them out this morning. And, and, and time will tarry. Uh, please pray that time will tarry. I've got to get through this message. God is speaking to our hearts this morning. He wants us to understand that we should not be uh, settling for Ishmael when he's got an eyes. When he's got a blessing, yeah. we shouldn't be settled in what we have now. You see, Genesis 18 and 10 says, 
this. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind her. We understand this uh, after the chapter that I read. We understand that, that God had spoke to Abraham. But remember, before this time, that Sarah said, you know, we haven't had any children. And, and I've been buried. And so I'm going to give you, a, uh, give you my handmaid. Before that time, God had told Abraham they had had a covenant. They had that he was going to bless Abraham, make him the father of many nations, and he was going to be blessed, and everything was going to work out. And Abraham had already talked to God. God had already touched Abraham and blessed him. But things began to take place even after God had already told Abraham that you will have a child, there will be children. You see, if you look over in Genesis chapter 15, verse 1, And after the word of the Lord came to Abram, in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me? See, if I go childless and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given their seed, and lo, one born in my house of my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord come unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. God had already promised Abraham that he was going to have a son that would be the heir of all that was his and all that God had blessed. God had brought him out into a land that he would show him. Abram had already seen the anointing and the power of God, but yet Abram had some things that took place. First of all, self began to rise up, Genesis 12 and 2. And I'll make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee uh, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. You see, uh, Abraham had already been told by God that, hey, I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to make you great. I'm going to make your name great. Everybody's going to know who Abraham is. You know, even in 2020, everybody knows who Abraham is. If you've ever been to church at least once or twice in your life, you know who Abraham is. Children began to sing this song many years ago. Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just pray to the Lord right on left or on right. Y'all remember that song, right? Father Abraham is known all across this world, all across this nation, all across the church world. As a whole, Father Abraham is known for these things, for his songs. But Abraham is being told by God that he was going to be blessed that he was going to be touched, and he was going to be uh, known, and he was going to be great, and he was going to be a blessing uh, to other people, and other people were going to be a blessing to him. Abraham already knew this. You see, God had a covenant with Abraham. God had a covenant with him that he was going to bless him. He was going to help him. He was going to minister in his life. He was going to be there for him. He had a, he had a blessing for him, something that he could be blessed by, something that he could have. He had a, he had a plan for Abraham. A plan that Abraham, all he had to do was sit back and ride and go wherever God told him and do whatever God told him and say whatever God told him. Abraham had a ride that was going to be great and it was going to be awesome. But then all of a sudden, Sarah got in the way and Sarah began to rear up and Sarah, his lovely wife, she says, you know what, Abraham? Uh, we don't have any children, and so I'm just going to give you my handmaid. I'm just going to give you Hagar, and you go uh, into her, and, and you'll conceive. Well, lo and behold, we know the story. How uh, Abraham went in, and, and Hagar conceived, and, and as, as Hagar conceived, then Sarah was despised in the eyes of Hagar. And, and, and Abram uh, knew this, and Sarah knew this, and so Abram said, Sarah, you can deal with uh, ever how you want to, and do whatever you want to, and, uh, with your handmaid, and so the handmaid came back, and then the handmaid fled and went by the fountain where she was spoken to. And so I want you to see that, that, that God had already set in motion a son named Isaac. God had already set in motion. Now this is before they stood at the tent door and was told, but he was already told he was going to have a child. He was already told he was going to be blessed. He was going to be a blessing for the nations. He was going to be known. And so this is, uh, this is a time when Abram should be standing on God. But instead of standing on God's word, Abram standing on Sarah's word. Oh, hallelujah. Help me, Lord. Abraham is standing on Sarah. Sarah prayers up and says, Well, you know, Sarah, we, we don't have a child, so I'll do what, whatever it is. So they tried to help God out. And they was going to have a son. They was going to have a son. Uh, through this, uh, through Hagar, you're going to have a son that was not 
in the way and in the manner and the fashion that God intended. But yet Abraham and Sarah decided they were going to help out. Self rose up. Self became the uh, became uh, the, the over the spirit life. Self began to rise up. Flesh began to rise up. And they said, "Well, you know what? We'll just help God out, and we'll do this." And I'm afraid that's what's happened in the church world. Many people have decided they're going to just help God out instead of just believing God and what He said. Instead of trusting God and what He said, when God makes you a promise, I don't want to get ahead of myself. He intends on keeping that promise. Hallelujah! My God's not a liar. Hallelujah! And what He did for them back in the day, He'll do for you. What He did for them back in uh, Bible times, He'll do for you today. Hallelujah! It doesn't matter that you didn't live uh, uh, two thousand years ago. What matters is that you're living today, and God gives you breath every morning to wake up. Hallelujah! And like we learned in Sunday school, Hallelujah! You've got a choice every day. You can allow self to rear up, and you can try to help God all you want to. But let me tell you, when flesh rears up and tries to help God, it is no help to God. It's a hindrance. There's too many hindrances going on in the church world of America in today's time. Too many hindrances, people trying to help God. Well, if God speaks to you and tells you something, do it. But if God hadn't spoke to you, you can't say, well, God told me to do this, or God said to do this, or God said to do that. Sometimes it's self. You know, we've got to get away from that self, take over the uh, flesh, take it over the spirit life. That's why we wrestle inside of ourselves every day. When we get up, that's why we have a choice. We can choose to let self be ruled today, or we choose to let the spirit of God rule our life today. Hallelujah. I want the spiritual David to run uh, the roost today. I don't want the flesh in the world the day to run the roost today. I want God to have his way. We live in a time. We live in a time where people are trying to uh, uh, help God and trying to do things in our way. You see, self goes up and causes the bad occurrence. Because you see, we get the mindset, well, God's not going to come through. Well, God hasn't done it yet. I don't guess he's going to do it. I might as well do it myself. That's the mindset people have. You know what that is? That's a lie straight from the devil. Mm -hmm. That's a lie straight from the devil. If God tells you something, you can stand on it. If God, and hallelujah, if you're serving an awesome God, he's awesome today just like he was yesterday. And I'm serving an awesome God. There is none greater. There is none more powerful. There is none better. There is none more wonderful. Hallelujah. Quit letting the devil tell you all those lies where you need to think and you need to believe that you need to help God out. Just let God do the work in your life. Hallelujah. Push self down daily. Push it by self and say, self, you stay down. I'm going to live for the Lord today. Because you know what? It causes us to settle for Ishmael. Now we all understand what Ishmael represents. Ishmael represents all the fighting that's going on in the world today and in the Middle East. That's why they're still fighting in the Middle East today. It's because Ishmael. What did the Word of God say? It said it's going to be a wild man. You know, what, you know what a wild man is? A wild man does all kinds of things chaotic. Like the Tasmanian devil. I know y'all seen that cartoon. <laughs> like that. You know, Tasmanian devil try, uh, does, uh, goes real fast. It stirs everything up. Let me tell you, that's what the devil likes to do. He likes to stir things up. Oh, yes, he does. He likes to stir things up. He likes to get things uh, going in a whirlwind. And before long, self has already been, uh, been committed to self. And we, we, we'd like a Tasmanian devil doing what we want to do, living how we want to do, acting like we want to act. Let me tell you, hallelujah, if God gave you a this morning, this body should be his temple. It's the temple of the living God. We need to live, hallelujah, like God has blessed us and God has blessed us. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 You see, bad occurrences come when self takes over. We begin, when bad occurrences come, there's things such as we lose hope, we lose faith, we lose our holy conversation, we lose our desire to read the Word of God, our desire to pray, our desire to be in church, our desire to do this and that. The enemy, hallelujah, wants nothing more. Mm, Lord help me. The enemy wants nothing more. Then for the church doors to shut, Come on. the church people to stay home, Come on. and the church people to quit praying, yes. and for all the Bibles to get dust on. Amen. That's what the devil wants. Yes. And you know what? When we try to help God out, that's exactly what begins to take place. The first off, when circumstances come our way, when obstacles come our path, and we can't control, can't do nothing about it. The first thing we want to give up, no, it's not the food at the table. No, it's not 
the vehicle we drive. No, it's not the house we have to do. It's not the job. The first thing we want to give up is God. Mm -hmm. When obstacles come our way, the first thing we want to give up, oh. well, I might as well just quit going to church and ain't doing enough good. Well, I might as well just quit praying. God ain't heard my prayer. Well, I might as well just quit this. Well, you know what? If you quit, you sure enough going to be doomed. Hallelujah. Okay. But if you hold on and say, you know what? I'm not settling for an Ishmael that's a wild man. It's going to cause destruction in my life. It's going to cause a problem in my heart. It's going to cause a problem. I'm going to wait on the eyes that God has in store for me. Because God already sees you. God already knows who you are. God already is looking at you today. And he's wanting to give you an Isaac. Hallelujah. You don't have to settle for an Ishmael. You can get the eyes of God's Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hey. I'll never forget. Some of, you, some of you won't forget either. No, I remember the time. We didn't have a lot of children coming to our church. And one night, it might have been Wednesday, I don't know. But anyways, I boldly stood up here in front of the church, in front of God and everybody. And I said, if people don't start inviting children and other people to church, I'm going to pray. And I know God hears my prayers. I'm going to pray that every woman in here gets prayed. That's what I said. <laughs> you know what happened next? You know what happened? People started inviting. People started inviting children. And our children's department has grown tremendous. I know we have a lot out right now for sickness and different things. But our children's department has grown tremendous. You know why? Because I boldly stood up and said, you know what? I'm not settling for the status quo. I'm not settling for just, well, it'll just be what it is. No, we're not doing that around no one church God. It's not just going to be what it's going to be. It's going to be what God's already promised and what God's already said and what God's already doing. Hallelujah. And so you know what? We're going to get that Isaac that he's promised us here in the old church of God. We're not going to settle for an Ishmael. We're not going to settle, hallelujah, for a wild man to go running around town doing this and doing that. But what we're going to get is that Isaac that God's got for us here in the old church of God. I'm telling you today, hallelujah, God is alive and well. God is blessed. God is ministering. Hallelujah. God wants to establish that covenant Amen. with every one of us that he established with Abraham before Abraham allowed self to take control. You see, David, God says, I'll, I'll lead you into the direction that I'll show you. And Abraham had enough faith and trust in God that he went where he didn't know he was going. Headed in a direction he didn't know what was out there. But yet Abraham went because God said go. But when it comes down to when God says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless you, Abraham yeah. couldn't wait. He couldn't wait to let God's will take place, let God's will take place. He had to get involved. Self rose up. Why settle for Ishmael when we can crucify self daily and say, self, get behind me. Amen. You're not going to be in control today. Because right. you know what? Self says, I'm tired. Those of you, uh, everybody that, that works or that stays busy during the day, when it gets about dark, you know, I, I might be the only one, but sometimes I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I'm sleeping. I, want, I sit on that couch, and sometimes I just goes off with me. You know, we're all there. We all, we all get, uh, we all get weak and we get tired. But hallelujah, we still got to open that Bible and read. We still got to talk to God. We still got to be what God wants us to be. We can't settle for self. We can't settle for what self is going to give. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So we understand that self rose up. Secondly, for God, for God, God's promises. God said we're blessed. God said we're multiply. But during this process of time, hallelujah. I don't want to get myself on the lean, but when his wife spoke, what did he do? He jumped. <laughs> Some of you women don't say amen. <laughs> Abram jumped. He said, okay. That's, that's what, what she thought we should do. And, and so he, and when he was listening to her, and he was, and I, and I don't mean this just really by no means bad. When he was listening to the chin music of others, no matter who it was, of others, he began to listen to that instead of the voice that he'd already heard from God. And I'm afraid that's what's happened in the church world. We've listened to others' chin music. I'm talking about men, and women, boys, and girls. We've listened to other people. Other people talk in our ear. It's just listen to the voice of God. It's just listen to what God says. I'm going to help you this morning. Hallelujah. Just hold on. Hallelujah. God tells us 
that, that, that he's going to help us. He wants to, he wants to bless us. He wants to minister our life. But yet we listen to somebody else. We listen to everybody else instead of listening to what God's already told us. You see, we're, set, we're settled like Abraham did. We're settled for Ishmael because we want it now. We think God's forgotten us. And God don't remember what he told us. And God don't remember what's in the word of God. Let me tell you, God remembers every word that's written down. Amen. Every word that's written down. Hallelujah. And you, you say, preacher, what are you talking about? Well, he promised us healing in the word of God. By his stripes, we are healed. He promised us miracles in the Word of God. Talks, he talks about it in the Word of the Scripture. Talks about when we when we live in holy and righteous pleasing unto God, uh, signs and wonders will follow them. When the Holy Ghost has come upon them, signs and wonders. That's miracles. Eternal life has been promised to us. For God's so Word gives us God's Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's eternal life. He promised us power. Over the devil and the imps of hell. He promised us power. He promised us all the blessings and the miracles. He also promised us he'd never leave us or forsake us. He promised us he'd be with us to the end of the world. He promised us that he was going to be there. Hallelujah. Also told in Scripture, be absent in the body, be present with the Lord. Also told in Scripture, for another man wants to die, and after that, the judgment. We've listened across our world at what everybody else is saying. We've listened to what the media says about the riots going on, about the COVID-19 that's taking place. We listen to the politicians tell lies. We listen to this one tell us that, and this one tell us that. Well, you better not do that when you're liable to get sick. You better not do that when you're liable to get hurt. You better not do that when you're where is our faith when God says he will never leave us or forsake us? Where is, Come on. Where is the Isaac that we've been waiting on yes. when we're settling for each? And I would say, well, this one says this. I'm just going to do this or that, whatever the case. Where is our faith? Hallelujah. Now let me tell you, God is so good. He's been so good to me. Amen. I'm going to tell you now, and, 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 and I love everyone. No, there's no one that can say I don't love them. And I care about people. And I love people. And I'm all for everybody being cautious and doing with They do things out, out or whatever. I'm all for being cautious. I, I, God gives us wisdom to be cautious. But let me just tell you this morning, October whatever day, 18th, 2020. Let me tell you this morning. <laughs> David Earl Shane, when it's David Earl Shane, it's time to leave this earth. If I'm healthy as a horse, or I'm laying in the hospital with whatever sickness, when it's time for me to leave this earth, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Hallelujah. But I refuse to accept an Ishmael when God's got a promise for me. God, God said he's going to bless me. He said he's going to help me. He said he's going to touch me. Now let me tell you, I'm ready. I'm ready. Get sick next week and have to be out for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. I may get to COVID and be out and have to quarantine, which is what we're supposed to do if we get it or around somebody. Hallelujah. But until I get it, I'm going to keep serving God. When I get it, I'm going to keep serving God. I'm going to keep trusting God. I'm going to keep believing God. Hallelujah. And you know what? And if it takes me out of here, and I pray that it don't, anything, is, whatever, it might be a transfer truck today, take me out. But let me tell you, when I leave this earth, I'm going to a place called heaven. I'm going to a place that God has instructed and told me that I can have. Amen. So I, I come to you this morning with all humbleness. That we have to ask ourselves, are we standing on the promises of God? Or have we given up on the promises and we'll just take the Ishmael right now? We'll just take what I gotta have right now. Take what's going on right now. As I said, we have wisdom and we have understanding. 
And let me tell you, let me be clear. Nobody misunderstand me this morning that's watching live stream or that's here. Whatever God places on your heart and whatever you feel is wise for you or your family, that's what you do. That's what you do. You don't do what this one over here says, what the newspaper says, what the multimedia says, what anybody else says. What God tells you to do is what you do. Amen. What God places in your heart is what you do. You use the wisdom of God. You use the wisdom of God. Don't let anybody mis misunderstand you. But let me tell you, for those across this church world in America that have not been listening to the will of God and been doing, to, doing the will of man, there's a problem there. There's a problem there. We've got to say, what do you want for my life, God? What do you want for me? Am I standing on the promises? Hallelujah. Am I standing on the power of God? Am I standing on the presence of God? Am I standing on what God told me? Hallelujah. You know what? Hallelujah. At the minister's meeting, I had to be in the video for a minister's meeting on Thursday. Somebody made this comment about a little story that uh, he had told before about, a, uh, about a, a preacher went by a house and looked over there, and there was an old praying saint that had a Bible on the floor, and she was just standing on it praying and crying and talking to God. And, and, and he come by and he said, he said, sister, said, what's going on? She said, she said, everything was getting bad and everything was just not, not what it should be. She said, so I just got my Bible out and said, I'm going to stand and I'm going to stomp on the promises of God until God comes down and does what he said he'll do. You know what? If you need to get your Bible and stand on it, do that. Because I'm telling you this morning, God is faithful and just to each and every one of us. God is faithful and just. Hallelujah. Reach out and help you at any time, in any circumstance, in any obstacle, in any need. God is faithful. But the question is, have we been faithful to God? Yes, sir. You see, what we need to do is quit listening to others and stand on what God has told us individually, stand on what God's told us corporately as a church, stand on what God's told us through the scripture throughout all the earth, Stand on the promise of God, and we need to stand, stand, stand. We don't need to lay down. We don't need to give up. We don't need to give in. We don't need to throw in the towel and say, well, I'm done, and I'm through. But let God work in your life. Let God help you. Know? Let God be in the Isaac that he promised you. It's the sibling for that wild man called Ishmael. Ishmael. Hmm. It's going to be a wild man. Hallelujah. I remember before I got saved, I was wild. I did what I wanted to do, said what I wanted to say, didn't matter what anybody else said. Regretfully, I remember the time, didn't matter what mom and dad said. I was going to do what I wanted to do. You see, I settled for Israel. I settled for it. Because I knew about church, I knew about God, I'd been in church, loved church. Knew about church and serving God. Some of the youth did all kinds of things. In high school, got to hang around with buddies, listen to them, talking like them, acting like them, doing things they did. Because I wanted to be cool. I said, instead of trusting in the promises of God. And I look back and I think, man, if I would just, just let Jesus be Lord of my life, I would have served him from that time on. My own mouth, what could God have done with me then? Hallelujah. But I also look back and I think about the things that while I was out in the world that I was blessed with and how God used that time. God used that time that I settled for in Ishmael. God used that time to bless me. He sent my beautiful wife to me. While I was out in the world, one was in church. So my beautiful wife. Got married. Had our daughter begging on the way. Still wasn't in church. Doing the whole thing. Living my own life. Then God opened my eyes and we started gradually going to church. And on December 31st, 1997, I gave my heart to the Lord, accepted him as a personal Savior. Loved him and served him the best I can ever since. Done the best I can do. Had bought some fingers along the way, but I asked him for forgiveness and he kept my feet on the solid rock. Hallelujah. Yes. I tell you, I look back and I see that I settled for Ishmael when the whole time God had a promise for my life. God had a miracle for my life. God had something in store for me. And even though I went out in the world, even though I settled for Ishmael, God still blessed me with an eye. God still blessed me with a calling to preach the gospel. 
with a calling to pastor a church, with a calling to do his will and to tell other people. And so I tell you this morning, a lot of people are missing out on the callings and the witnessing of God because they're settling on an Ishmael, a wild man. Thirdly, Joseph fight, overcome. I thought I said Ishmael represented a wild man, represented the fighting. If you look at the history, you look at overseas in the Middle East, there's fighting and there's nation against nation because of Ishmael. It all results back to Ishmael and, and the call. You see, God God told uh, Hagar, God told her that, hey, you're going to multiply and there's going to be, a, there's going to be a, not many nations. But it's going to be a wild man. You're not going to get along with anybody. Not going to get along with this one. You're not going to get along with that. Always going to be fighting. And I tell you, that's what's going on in the world. That's what's going on in today. That's what's going on in a lot of places. It's called places of worship. There's a lot of fighting. You know what's happened? People settle for Ishmael instead of letting God send an Isaac. That's why things are happening. That's why churches are having to close doors across the land because people quit going. And I'm not talking about because of COVID. Like people quit going. And people don't want to don't want to have church anymore. People want to just do their own thing. You know why? Because they settle for Ishmael. They want to do the wild stuff. They want to settle the wild earth and they think everything's going to be all right. But let me tell you, hallelujah, there's something greater, uh, greater than a fight and greater than getting a fight going, greater than an Ishmael. There's something greater. His name is Isaac, which represents a covenant that man has with God. That represents a covenant that God has with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And let me tell you this morning, if God's formed a covenant with you, if you're here today and you're saved, you've got a covenant. If you're watching live stream and you're saved to the uttermost, you've got a covenant between you and God. You shouldn't settle for an Ishmael to come between that covenant with you and God. You should have, instead of fighting, you should serve God and let the covenant continue to grow and continue to bless you and continue to minister in your life. You see, God gives us, uh, uh, when we fight, uh, God takes, uh, when we fight in these days, the enemy comes in and takes away the, uh, the hope and the faith and the, and the desire and everything that we have, the holiness and the, and the, and the doctrine, takes away everything we have fighting. But when we listen to God and we let him sit in that life, let him uh, and reach down and give us those blessings he promised, let us give us that covenant within our life. You know what it does? It gives us that vision that we can see next week, not just tomorrow. Gives us that desire that we'll be what God would have us to be. Gives us the teachings and the doctrines that we have in our life that we've got to be pleasing to God if we want to leave this world and go to a better place. Gives us that holiness that we need to live. That's what having a covenant with God is. Having that holiness in our life. But let me tell you, every one of us at an appointed time is going to leave this earth. I don't like talking about death no more than the next man, but let me tell you, I know that death ain't going to hold me. Hallelujah. The grave going to hold my body now. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Oh, the devil thinks he's got me. The devil thinks he's going to beat me and get me discouraged. Oh, yes, I've been discouraged. Yes, I've been down in the mother grove. Hallelujah. Just like you. Everybody in here has been in the mother grove at some point. Everyone in here has been down and discouraged. But let me tell you, I'm up on the mountaintop today. Things might not be going like I want them. Things might not be going in the manner I want them to be. But let me tell you, God is still God on the mountain. He's still God in the valley. Hallelujah. He's still reaching down in heaven for you and I. He's still God. Hallelujah. And I'm still going to serve him. And I'm going to go for the new as well. God is still God. Hallelujah. No matter what time we go. God is still God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's still blessing our lives. Hallelujah. You don't think you've been blessed? You pick you out any graveyard you want to go to today, and you look at any grave there, mm -hmm. and you ask them, are they breathing? Mm -hmm. No. None of them that's in a graveyard today are, are breathing. Everyone in here today, everyone watching the live stream, you're breathing. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Why? Why are we settling for what this world has to offer? Why are we settling <laughs> for the negativity? Why are we settling? And saying, well, they say it's okay. I go, I don't care what anybody says. If God doesn't say it's okay, it's not okay. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. It's all right. I'm not running for no political office, so it's all right. I can say this live stream will cross all the way. I'm not running for political office. But let me tell you, if we don't give God back in people's lives, 
Listen to me, dear. And I've got a message on a critical day like this. We don't listen to God and, and get God back in people's lives. From the outhouse to the White House, there's going to be destruction coming. Amen. It's on the horizon. Yes, the Word of God talks about it. The Word of God talks about it just like the Word of God tells us about Ishmael and about Isaac. God had Isaac the whole time that he, that he promised Abraham. I believe without a shadow of a doubt, God had already knew that it was going to be Isaac. When he first spoke to Abraham and told him, I'm going to bless you. Yes. And I'm going to make you a father of many nations. going to multiply you. I, without a shadow of a doubt, I believe God already had Isaac lined up. Already had Isaac in vision. Now, I don't know how old that worked, but I'm not God. As far as how, how that could have occurred. But I'm telling you this morning, I believe it did. Because when it came time, and, 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 and the men came over there, it was angel of the Lord. Come and talk to Abraham and Sarah. Told Abraham, said, you're going to have a son. Sarah heard it laugh. And they came back and, and called her out on the carpet and said, oh, I didn't laugh. Which she did laugh. Because mm -hmm. she thought it was funny. But let me tell you, hallelujah. Didn't matter how old she was. Didn't matter who she was. What matter is, it was the covenant. Hallelujah. Between Abraham and God. And God was going to send an Isaac. Even though Ishmael had already been, even though Ishmael had been, uh, been conceived, even though Ishmael was already going to be a wild man, God was going to send the covenant. God was going to send the one that the covenant was going to be by that, that God could use to bless Abram's house and Abraham's family and the nations to come to time after time after time. And so that was, that was Isaac that God was going to send and God was going to bless him. And I'm telling you this morning, God's got a blessing for you. God's got a blessing for you, and God's got a blessing for you. All you got to do is say, I'm not settling for Ishmael. I'm not settling for something that's going to be a fight and a pull and a pick and a prod. I'm going to let God bless me with an Isaac. Hallelujah. You see, when God blesses with an Isaac, it's so much easier. You know that old saying, it's, it's better, to, uh, better to work smarter than harder. Let me tell you how to live. If you just let God give you an Isaac, you ain't going to have to work here as hard. But if you allow yourself to rear up and you allow things inside to just do what they want to do uh, and within our life, and we just be what we want to be and float along and don't have uh, good sense and act like we don't have good memory for what God said and we just float along, go along, get along. You know what? There's going to be more fighting. There's going to be more turmoil. There's going to be more disruption. There's going to be more chaos. There's going to be more problems. There's going to be more situations. But all we got to do is say, God, give me my eyes. And God, give me my eyes. And hallelujah. God will do that and God will bless us. Each and every one. Hallelujah. So I ask you this morning. Are you saying that for Israel, no power? There's fighting, self-rising up, fighting over this, fighting over that. He's doing what you want to are you settling for an Ishmael or are you letting the Spirit of God control your life? Counting on and standing on the cross of God. Hallelujah. Let the covenant of God lift you up. So there's only two choices. You're either settling for an Ishmael or you're receiving the promise of God. I tell it to you, many in the church world have settled for that Ishmael, have settled for the problems. The desires of flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, just desire those things of the world. Hallelujah. God has an Isaac for you. If you'll, if you'll give him your life, if you'll give God your life, he'll bless you. He'll bless you. He'll help you. But if you continue to settle for the Ishmael, the only thing you'll receive in the end is destruction and turmoil. Because you see, if you're settling for an Ishmael, that means you've allowed self to rear up and take control. And if self controls your life instead of the Spirit of God, then you're not where you need to be with God. You're not who you need to be with God. If you allow that to happen. If you're fighting over this and fighting over that, and don't have peace and comfort. There's a problem. But you see, Isaac brings peace. You see, I've got peace this morning that I can tell you I love the Lord with all my heart. And no matter what comes or goes, I serve an awesome God. 
I've got peace this morning and tell me everything's going to be all right. Yes, things look dark and gloomy. We're here and we're seeing the numbers on this COVID-19 rising. Dark and gloomy, we're seeing uh, uh, things uh, uh, rising and rallies of this and people getting hurt and shot and killed. And we see everything looks dark and gloomy. But I've always been a little bit different. I don't look at the gloomy, doomy business. I look at the bright light of God. Amen. And that's what we need to turn our eyes towards, is towards God. When we, when we get our eyes off God, we start focusing on the world and what's going on. But when we get our eyes on God, we focus on what God has for our life, what God wants us to do. Hallelujah. I refuse. I refuse to let anything in this world or anyone in this world, or any sickness in this world, come between me and my God. Amen. I refuse. Amen. I refuse. Hallelujah. Oh, help me out in that. God wants some people to step out in faith. Mm -hmm. Some people to say, you know what? Give me my Isaac. Mm -hmm. I've settled for so long. I've, I've listened to this. I've listened to that. I've settled too long. Mm -hmm. God, I know you hear me. And I know you're there. Please send me my eyes. That's what we need to get back to, church. That's what we need to get back to. All across the land. Hallelujah. All across the land. Everyone want to stand with me? Hallelujah. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Rep to the Lord. Everybody look at that. I ask you this morning, all of you that's good online, please, please listen closely. If you're here this morning, you're online this morning, and you're saying, Preacher, I'm being honest with God and myself. I have settled here lately for an Ishmael. When the whole time God has his eyes for me. Would you slip your hand up and write it down and say, Preacher, just pray for me. And my family, God bless you. I won't call you out. God bless you. I won't embarrass you by no means. I'm asking you this morning. God bless you. Brothers, God bless you. Preacher, I, I've been settled when I should be holding on to the promises of God. I should be holding on to the covenant. God made me. Ever how many years ago you've been saved? God made you a covenant. And said he never leave you nor forsake you. If you've been to the end of the world. But you settled for whatever reason. We can't change the past, but we can change the future. With God, all things are possible. With God. God will help you today. As we pray in just a few moments, those of you at home that's watching live stream, those of you that are new this week, find you a good place to kneel or to sit down and pray with us when we pray in a minute. These altars are open. If you feel comfortable coming to the altars, you come to the altars. If you want to stay at your seat, you hear what you, you stay at your seat, whatever you prefer. But I want us all to be praying this morning. When we pray, I want those that raise their hands, those that did this should have, to say, God, I'm sorry for settling. I'm not settling anymore. I want you to give me my eyes. I want you to give me my blessing that you have. Give me my covenant you already have for me. And touch my life. Help me believe what you have to be. And God will come right now, right now. And will help you this morning when we pray. If you're viewing online or you're here today and you don't know the Lord's a Savior, all you got to do is because your heart is beating out of your chest right now. I know God's moving and God's been shot in His presence. But you don't know the Lord's personal Savior. All you got to do is say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me for my sins. Change me, cleanse me, wash my heart clean as snow. And help me be what I need to be for your glory and your name's sake. And Jesus coming into my heart will help you. <coughs> He'll bless you. He'll minister your life. All you got to do is that. It's simple. It's simple. It's simple. Hallelujah. It's simple. Hallelujah. All you got to do is that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Give me a call. Make sure you touch my sister. Reach down to us. Give me a call. Touch your Lord. Thank you. Lord, 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 thank you.
bless our minister of Christ. Lord, we reach out and give our lives to you. Lord, we come to you today, each and every one in this place, each and every one in this house, God. Lord, we come to you today believing you, trusting you, praising you. Lord, we thank you for what you've done in our lives. Lord, we've had several raise our hands for those that didn't and should have and those that are on, on the right track, God. Lord, I, I, Lord, I want you to know that they're sorry. Lord, I, I want everyone to understand, Lord, that they're sorry for settling for Ishmael. Ishmael is no way to go. Settling for the world, for settling for Ishmael, settling for a fight is no way to go, God. We understand that. We want you to reach out. We want you to give us an Isaac that you've already promised years ago, a covenant that you've already promised we could have, a blessing in our life, a miracle in our life. Lord, I ask you to touch everyone that raised their hand, everyone at home, Lord, that would have raised their hand and we see them. God, I ask you to touch them and bless them, Lord, help them to never sell them again, but to allow the eyes to come forth in their life, the blessing to come forth in their life, the miracle to come forth in their life, bless them in my way. Lord, those that are lost and are done, that are viewing, that are watching, Lord, that are here, Lord, I ask you to save their soul, help them to know they're in the wrong, help them to ask for Lord, you come in and cleanse their heart. Forgive them for their sins. Change their life. Save their soul. Change them. Help them to be what they need to be. Help them to be forgiven and cleansed and go forth to do your will. God, I ask you to move and minister to everyone's life. Everyone here today, God, I ask you to bless them and touch them. Lord, reach down and minister to life. Lord, reach down and touch my brother. Reach down and bless him, God. Move them my will. Give that eye that you brought them. Give that covenant. Renew that covenant with them. God, I ask you to move them my way. Touch them my dead soul to me. Everyone in here today, God, help them to renew their covenant with them. Help us renew, Lord, and let that eyes come forth in their life. Lord, help us not to settle for the world. Help us not to settle for the gloomy we do. But God, help us to be excited about what you're doing. God, you're moving in a mighty way today, and I feel your presence. I know that you're here. The Holy Ghost anointing is reaching out. And it's blessing lives. Lord, we come to you today knowing there's nowhere else to go, no one to turn to. Nobody else to talk to about it. But God, you gave us a covenant, you gave us an option. We can have an Isaac in our life. Or we can have an Ishmael. Lord, help self not to rear up in our lives. Help flesh not to rear up in our lives. But help the spirit man in our lives to be in control that we go forth and do your will. Help us to live holy and pleasing unto you. Help us to be a witness and a testimony for you. Help us to do your will and be that light and that witness. God, bless everybody that's watching online, that's live streaming. Lord, help us all to have wisdom and understanding and knowledge. Lord, help us all to be cautious about what we do and where we go and the things we say. Help us always to be cautious. And Lord, if they can tell us to, if they want us to, to wear a mask or to stay six feet away or to uh, uh, wash our hands a lot, Lord, help us to have wisdom to do these things. But God, help us not to settle for the status quo. Help us not to settle for what the world wants us to do and to, because somebody else is doing it. But God, help us to do what we're supposed to do because you're ordained it for our life. Lord, we understand that you're in control. We understand that you are having the whole, you have the whole world in your hands. God, we ask you today to minister and move in every life. Every heart uses for your glory and your sake. Help us to go forth and do your will. Bless everyone here today. Bless everyone watching. That will go forth and do your will. Help us to always say. Keep us safe. Watch over us. Bless us. Touch every person that's sick today. Touch everyone that's at home. Lord, touch everybody in such in our church. Bless them and touch them and minister their lives. Lord, we love you, praise you, and thank you. In Jesus, all the name we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we love you, we praise you. Lord, bless our brother and our sister. Continue to minister their life, their home, their family. Touch each and every one that they God will be your people. Lord, we love you, we praise you. Give you glory and honor. Jesus, holy name. Hallelujah. The church said, Amen. Amen. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out today. Thank you, Sister Rita, for teaching and for playing. Thank you. Thank each and every one of you for being here. It's good to see each and every one in the house of the Lord. Appreciate you watching live stream. Appreciate you viewing. Those of you watching live stream and viewing, when you feel okay and you feel comfortable and you pray and you talk to God, we look forward to seeing you then. Praise God. We love each and every one. Remember, Jesus loves you. Pastor David loves you as well. Don't forget tonight's service at 6. God bless you. Have a wonderful, safe day. Hallelujah. Liberty to God.